Hello everyone, this is Bio Phoenix here, and today we're going to be doing the pickup video for the month of uh, November and December of 2019. Now, I'm actually doing this one a little bit more earlier than I normally would, because I'm actually recording this on the 21st, and I have a feeling I'm probably going to get like a bunch of stuff on like the 26th on like Boxing Day, and of course, you know, there's like a ton of other like digital sales going on that I want to get some games for, so yeah, there's just going to be a lot of stuff I would have to talk about, but uh, yeah, so unfortunately I haven't gotten around of like playing a lot of these games that I've recently picked up, because for anyone that doesn't remember or doesn't know, I, in November I was actually in Ottawa for like two weeks, so of course when I was out there I couldn't play like a whole lot of things, and then I was also just busy with a bunch of other stuff, so for this uh, episode I'm just going to be talking about whatever I can with some of the games that I've recently acquired, but I will definitely play them within 2020. And maybe I might actually beat them all, but we'll see when we get there. But uh, with that said, guys, uh, we'll just get right to it. So let's take a look at some of the Switch games that I got. So this first one right here is actually a game I got on my birthday. For anyone that doesn't remember, my birthday is on the 6th of December. And uh, this was the only game I got on that day, and it's also the one I've actually been playing. And I think I've almost finished it. And that happens to be Luigi's Mansion 3. So, yeah, this game is, uh, pretty damn fun. Now, it's pretty much just, like, the first game on the GameCube, which I also freaking loved, but only that this one actually does add in a lot more interesting ideas, which I like. Like, I like the whole Slime Luigi concept, where you gotta use him to get through, like, certain areas, and use him to solve different areas. I don't know, I thought it was really interesting, I thought it was really cool. And, of course, you know, I just pretty much love like the whole idea of just Luigi having his own game that's actually fucking good so you know because he deserves it so yeah pretty much if you love the one in the GameCube definitely give this one a go whenever you can I definitely really enjoy it a lot and I'm at uh, the 13th floor I think which I believe there in real life there is no such thing as 13 floors so that's kind of interesting that there's a 13th floor in this game but anyway so yeah damn good game <laughs> Shining Residence, and this is the steel case, which actually does look really cool. It's very nice and uh, shiny, and of course the actual case is in here. But, uh, yeah, so unfortunately this is one of those games I just picked up uh, not that long ago, and I just haven't played it yet. But for I, this was a game I was always interested in, since it was originally on the PS3, but it was Japan only, because Sega at the time were really fucking stupid when it came to localizing some of their games on uh, last gen because I mean they we barely even got the Yakuza game so you know but nowadays thankfully that's over with so they're actually decent again now so yeah I'm actually looking forward to playing this one I know a lot of people compare this game to like a Tales of game but I don't really know if it's going to be like that because I've actually played one of the Shining games on the PS2 called Shining um, Neo Sh Shining Force Neo and I actually did like that one. I thought it was uh, pretty cool from what I played. Though I never beaten it though, but I should get back to it one of these days. But I think this one I'm actually going to play first though, for sure. But uh, yeah, it definitely does look like an interesting one. So if anyone's ever played it, let me know what you think and we'll know from there. Alright, so I took off my sweater because it was getting pretty hot in here. So yeah, that probably won't distract anyone, but whatever. So okay, so the next thing we got is actually a double pack and that happens to be... Child of Light and Valent Heart. So, as you can tell, this is actually a European physical, and I did not actually order it online. I actually found it when I was in Ottawa, so because of that, I felt like, well, it's not like I'm going to be seeing this around here anytime soon, right? So, anyways, so I mainly bought this because of uh, Child of Light. That is a game that I've heard a lot of really great things about. I heard it was a really good and underrated uh, action RPG that was made by Ubisoft, of all people, because, you know... I don't really make a lot of games like that anymore, which is kind of sad, but hey, at least we got another version of this out, because this, like, the only physical version you could have gotten of Child of Light was on the Vita, and I did want to get that one, but just never seen it around in, like, forever, so. Now I finally got it, and I really can't wait to play it, and I will let you know in the near future, but, uh, as for, uh, Valent Hearts, The Great War, um, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about it. I honestly don't. I actually used to see it on, like, digital stores when it was on sale, but, like, I don't really know, like, anything. I don't know what type of game it is, but if anyone's ever played it, just let me know, and maybe I'll check it out. I mean, I do have it a part of this, so I guess I might as well check it out eventually, right? And next up we have is a game that I actually did play before, but it was the original version, and that happens to be 
Deadly Premonition Origins, which is a remaster of, well, Deadly Premonition, and what the hell can I say about this game? Like, <laughs> holy shit. Okay, so, yeah, this game is really fucking weird, and in case you don't already know, it's a, um, it's a horror game, and it also has an open world setting, and it also has life simulator elements, so, yeah, that's pretty damn weird. But it's also inspired by Twin Peaks, which is pretty damn cool. In fact, it's actually not the first game to be heavily inspired by that. That would probably have to be Mizuna Falls on PS1, which actually does have a fan translation. So, um, yeah, you can go check that out, too, if you if you are a fan of this kind of thing. But uh, that game's definitely not as ridiculous as this one, though. <laughs> that I can tell you for sure. But, uh, yeah, what, what more can I say about it? So, pretty much, you know, you play as a detective who's, like, always calling himself Zack, and he likes to talk about, like, random movie facts whenever you're driving around, which is pretty cool. And he also is, like, a coffee connoisseur, like, he knows, like, everything there is to know about coffee. It's very weird. <laughs> but, yeah, and of course, one other thing I have to mention that also makes this game an extra sort of special is that, like, one of your, uh, your cop teammates, I think his name was Woodman, he would, like, sometimes when you would talk to him, he would, like, always, like, randomly start doing squats. It was, like, really awkward, but hilarious. Oh, man. And that's not even scratching the surface on this. Like, there's, like, a lot of other shit, too, that's, like, really, like, weird and bizarre and, you know, very Suda 51 esque, but of course, this is done by Swery, the same guy that did, um, you know, Extermination and uh, Spy Fiction, and even did an indie game called The Missing, which I actually did enjoy what I played of that, but I never finished it though. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mainly wanted to get this because I do want to replay the game again because I never beaten it originally. And I heard this version actually does run really well for what it is. Though, of course, it still has, like, the glitchiness of it, though. But those glitchiness, though, is really what makes this game, like, extra funny. So, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, this is a game that I definitely uh, would recommend if you want something that's very, um... If you're like me and you like weird shit, this is, this is what you want. <laughs> Alright, so the next game we got here is on the GameCube, and it's actually one of the few GameCube games that I actually want for my collection. I'm actually almost done getting all the games I want for it, and that happens to be... Lost Kingdoms. So, I've already reviewed this game, but just to sum it up though, in case you don't feel like watching my review for it... The game is pretty much an action RPG, which is uh, something that the GameCube didn't get very many of them, but it did get a lot of card game RPGs, and this is one of them. So, you know, you use cards to, like, summon monsters to fight for you, and some of them will do, like, straight-up attacks. I actually enjoy this game, and I still do to this day, so... I actually did rent this game years ago when I saw it in, an, like, an ad for it in, uh, I think it was GamePro, and I thought it looked really cool. And then I eventually, when I got the GameCube, I rented this, and I was like, yeah, this game is a whole lot of fun. So, yeah, because of that, like I said, I do have some nostalgia sense for the game, but I do really enjoy it a lot, and I still do. And it was also the very first FromSoft game I ever played. Yeah, I actually didn't even know who the hell they were at the time, and I don't think anyone else knew either, so... Yeah, with that said, uh, yeah, this is one that I still do enjoy to this day, and I do think it is worth checking out. So next up, we got a Wii game, and this is a game that was actually kind of expensive for a while, but the last time when I seen it, when I was in Ottawa, it was actually, like, way cheaper than, like, the last time before that, so I figured it would be a good time to get it, and it's one that I've always wanted to try out, and that happens to be Opuna, which is a very weird name. Also, it has the word Poon in it, so that means that this game has to be, like, the best shit ever. Okay, well, to be serious, though, this, this is a very unique RPG, where it, the battle system, um, how can I explain it? It's like, sort of turn-based, but also sort of real-time, where like, like you actually hold, you actually throw balls at the enemies, and you gotta like, charge your shot with like, your energy, and the longer you charge it, you know, the more like, damage you do to the enemies. It's very interesting, and of course I kinda like the, uh, the art style in the game, it's very different, but very colorful. And, of course, the game was actually developed by Arte Piazza, who were the ones that made a lot of the Dragon Quest games, so that's kind of interesting. And it was published by Koei, so he was actually in the, um, the Warriors All-Stars game, which I thought was kind of amusing. So, yeah, this is one that I definitely do look forward to playing, for that it's very weird and bizarre. And, of course, I maybe might review it, we'll see how that goes. So next up we have is a PS3 game, and that happens to be... Jack and Daxter Collection HD with 1 through 3. 
So, I don't really need to say much about the game series. Everyone knows what it is at this point. It was just one of uh, Sony's franchises that was pretty popular for a while, but that now it's just kind of, well, non-existent anymore. Which is a shame, but that's okay, though. But, uh, yeah, so I haven't played these games in, like, forever. The only ones I played was 1 and 3. I never played 2, though I hear a lot of people say that that one was, like, really difficult as fuck, so, I don't know, like, I, I'll replay these games eventually there, but, uh, yeah, that's the reason why I got this, is because I do want to replay these games, because I do remember them being pretty good, and it has been a very long time, like I said, I think the last one I played was 3, and it was, like, in 2005, I think, I think that was when it came out around, I played it at a friend's house years ago, because I didn't have a PS2 at the time, but, uh, yeah, and this is actually the version that you do want if you do want to play the Jack and Daxter games in HD. Don't fuck with the PS4 versions. They're, uh, they're pretty shit. So, yeah, like, just fuck those versions. So, yeah, this is the one you'd want. Or you can just stick to the original PS2 version if you really so desire to. Alright, so next up we got is a PS4 game, but not your average one though. Nah, instead this is one of those weeb trash games, so I can see some people skipping over this part of the video, and hey, that's okay. I don't blame you sometimes. And that happens to be... Rabby Rabby. So this is a uh, Metroidvania style game with 8-bit graphics that are pretty nicely detailed, and also has some bullet hell elements, which is pretty cool and would be a lot of fun to mess with, but uh... Yeah, so obviously I haven't played it yet, but I did get it off of Play Asia because it was like really cheap and it was like the cheapest I've ever seen it for and I figured I'd jump on it. And also the one thing I do like with Play Asia is that at least you can actually go out and buy the game without feeling like you're rushed to do it before like copies run out and deal with like a bunch of bullshit from like scalpers and all that. So that's always a good thing. But yeah, um, yeah, other than that though, um, this one might take me some time to get to because I gotta be honest, when it comes to Metroidvania games, I'm pretty terrible at them. Like, I literally only beat one Metroidvania game and it was earlier this year, and I will talk about that in a series of videos that is coming up, but, um... Yeah, like I said, like, it's a genre I do really like, but I just have to, like, kind of be in the right mood for it, and of course, you know, there's just a shit ton of games out there, like, there's almost too many Metroidvania games out there to keep up with, like, you know, you got, like, Hollow Knight, you got Axiom Verge, you got, like, uh, Blasphemous, which looks badass as fuck, and then there's also, like, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is surprisingly good, because I was expecting it to be, like, Mighty Number no. 9, but thankfully it isn't, and I haven't even played all of those, so... Yeah, like I said, and there's like tons more, so we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, we'll see if I can actually beat this one and maybe some of those other ones that I mentioned whenever I get them. And we're almost done with this video, so the next one we got here is on the PS1, and this game happens to be one that I've actually wanted for quite a while, and I actually got it for a decent deal. Not dirt cheap, but also not like eBay prices, thank god. And that happens to be Alundra. So, you know, this is a working design game, so you got, like, the nice shiny cover, the, the shiny back cover, which is pretty cool. And, of course, you also do get a map in here as well, and that's really about it. Um, the, you know, it's not like the Lunar games where you get, like, a shit ton of crazy things that they just, like, you know, like, they didn't need to do that, but they did it anyways. But, yeah, the map is pretty cool, and you also got this, too, which is, uh, you know, gives you a lot of information and shit. So... Yeah, so I only played very little of this game uh, a couple years ago on through emulation, and I did really like it, I just never got around to getting back into it there. But I did like what I played of it, and of course it is like a top-down view game, kind of similar to Zelda, where like, you know, you go to dungeons, you do puzzles, you beat bosses, you get like extra shit and all that fun stuff. And I really love the sprite work in it, the music from what I heard is really good, and I love the art style, and well, it's just a really cool, really cool looking game that I can't wait to play more of. Also, fun fact, this game was released in Europe, it was actually one of the few uh, work and design games that got released over there, but it was published by Psygnosis, the same company that has that cool looking owl logo that I really like. So, yeah, like, Alundra is a pretty cool looking game, but, uh, like I said, though, it is one of those games that is kind of expensive, so, you know, if you do want to play it, I would recommend emulating it first in case it isn't your thing, because I heard this game does get really cryptic with the puzzles later on, but, well, that's what I'm going to use GameFAQs for if I ever get stuck. Alright, so we got one last game left, but this one I'm going to have to change view perspective here because it's uh, a little bit complicated. 
Alright, and this is the final game. This is actually something that I normally wouldn't get, but I thought it was actually a pretty cool piece, and it is related to something that I do really like, and that happens to be Holy Diva from uh, Dio, but it's the, uh, the a collector's edition reproduction card of the Famicom game, because yes, Dio actually got a Famicom game, kinda sorta where it's like a uh, side-scroller action platformer that is kind of similar to um, to Castlevania, but also meets a little bit of Mega Man, but you can actually shoot up in the game, so that that's pretty cool. But, and of course, the game is also very difficult, but it's also one of those games where, like, the more times you play it, you start to, you kind of start to get better at it, but the game is still hard as shit, though, so because of that, I do think it's recommend trying, but of course, it's not going to be for everyone, though, but I do enjoy it myself, but yeah, the music is also pretty good, too, even though there's no Holy Diver 8-bit remix or anything in it, but that's okay. But yeah, so this collector's box is actually pretty cool looking. I really love the, uh, like, the, the shiny writing here, and I love this, like, crest that they got. Uh, hopefully the lighting in here is not super shitty, but... Oh, there you go, you can kind of see it now. But yeah, that looks sick as fuck. And yeah, it was done by, uh, Retrobit. That's who, um, who put this out. This was actually an online-only thing, but I actually found it at the Retro Game Store that was in Ottawa, and it was actually, um... Uh, well, it was like the same price that you would normally get it for if you were to order it online, so it wasn't anything stupid. And, yeah, it was made by Irem. That's who made the game. And Irem's actually a really good underrated company. I do like a lot of their stuff. And, um, yeah, so I will take this lid off and show you guys all the goodies, but I'm gonna have to make another, like, jump cut because this thing is a bitch to open with one hand. Oh, right, yeah, so we got the lid off there, which is, like, super suction cupped. And this is the uh, the game, and as you can tell, this is the the box for it. It's actually a pretty cool looking cover. I really do like that. And um, then we got the side, and then we got the back here. Has like some like really cool writing. And you got some screenshots of the game, and you know all that fun stuff. And yeah, even this like I'm gonna have to open up later because you know like one hand. All right, so we got little. little this thing, which is amazing, best part about it, this is the reason why I bought this fucking shit, is just so I can play with that. And then we got this, the Holy Grail, take it easy, star plus uh, B and A. Now this thing, I will admit, was a real bitch to try to get back in there, it's like a big, like, fold-up thing. Like, it's like this, and it goes, and it like, goes in like that. Yeah, that, that took me forever to like try and mess with all right so we got uh, this little envelope here which actually does have some uh, little goodies in here so let me uh, take them out here oh yeah also these things are kind of annoying to take out or maybe I just just suck at it but yeah so yeah you got some you got a little trading card here but that's pretty cool looking and you got some stickers. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. Also, you got another uh, trading card right here, which is like really huge. But uh, yeah, I forgot to leave it in there. Also, like it says power up on the the envelope, which I thought was kind of cool. And then you got this, which says it is number. 229 out of 2,900. You know, it would be funny if someone actually had one that was 666. That'd be that'd be pretty amusing. But yeah, it's just telling you that, like, oh, this is the number, like, version that you got. Then, there's this, which is a notebook. Uh, if I open it up, it's literally just blank pages that you can just write in whatever you want. But I really do like this, though. This is, like, really sick looking. It's very shiny, and, of course, it's just, uh... It's very, uh, nice. It, it, it's pretty heavy for, like, what it is, like, for how big it is. Now, this stuff I'm not gonna take out, but I'll try to get a good view of it here. But, uh, you know, you get some pins. Like, that's a giant pin of, like, the main character sprite. And then you got, uh, this pin right here, which also looks really cool. And now, let's get all this shit put back in. Alright, we finally got all that in there. Okay, so now we can finally take this out. And there's also a, a little bit of a, a manual in here. It's actually pretty small 
from what I remember. Yeah, like, it's only, like, this big. Normally, the manuals are pretty big when it comes to NES games. So, uh... Now, just to kind of show you an example of what it looks like. It's also very bright and colorful, too. Like, uh, you know, these are all, like, uh, the enemies in the game and uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's just an example that I can give. Also, there's actually a Japanese part, too. Let me show you that real quick. Like, it's, uh... Yeah, like, right here. Like, it's even... They even have, like, a Japanese section. So, that that's kind of interesting. I don't even... <laughs> yeah, I guess they couldn't use the word Nintendo right there, so they had to make their own controller. That just looks the same. And then, here's the cartridge. It's a black cartridge right here. But yeah, I really dig the packaging of this, though. It is really cool. They put in a lot of work into it, which I thought was really awesome of them to do. But I also do have to say that, like I said, like, actually trying to, like, get all of this on footage is, like, it's kind of a bitch, and like I said, just taking everything out just takes a little bit of time, because I'm also trying to be very careful with this, because, you know, I don't want this shit to break or anything. But yeah, like I said, Holy Diver, it's a pretty cool game, but it's also very hard as hell, but it's also a very badass game, but of course, and of course, like I said, it's based after, like, one of my favorite uh, metal musicians, and by the way, you all need to check out his other band, uh, Rainbow. It's good shit. Highly recommended. So with that said, guys, that'll be it for um, this uh, pickup video. And of course, I hope you all have a happy Christmas, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, or whatever it is you do around this time of the year. But uh, anyways, hope you all have a good one. And of course, I'll see you all real soon.